Hi, my name's Mark, and I am making a video game about magnets. So one of my goals with this series is to show you a true, transparent, and unvarnished look at what it takes to make your very own video game. And part of that means I can't just show you the stuff that's fun and exciting and makes for good video footage, like prototyping game mechanics, designing levels, or doing surprise demo drops. And as it turns out, there's a lot of stuff in game development that just isn't very glamorous. Stuff like menus, the heads-up display, saving and loading data, supporting different controller types, syncing options, tracking progress, doing level transitions, and more. This is stuff that doesn't really get shown in dev diaries and documentaries because, in truth, it's very dry. But someone's got to make this stuff, and in this game, that someone is... Well, it's me, isn't it? Okay, so last time on this series, I completely overhauled my character controller, and part of that meant giving the player some options about how the character works, like letting you change from holding the button to aim to toggling it on and off, or letting the player remap all of the keys and controller buttons, or letting the player change the colour of the magnet. And this was all well and good for a throwaway test level, but if I want these options to work across an entire game, I'm going to need to find some way to sync these options from level to level, let the player save and load these options from their hard drive, and provide some kind of UI to let the player set these uh, settings. And so, after a bit of fiddling around, here's what I came up with. When you first load the level to the title screen, I spawn in an Options Manager. This is an invisible game object with a bunch of scripts to track the player's options and save and load those options to the hard drive. And the object is tagged Don't Destroy on Load which means when the player starts the game, the title screen is deleted from memory and replaced with a level, but the options manager hangs around like a bad fart. And because it's still there in memory, the new level can find the options manager and essentially ask it questions. Like, the character can say, should I have low sensitivity aiming right now? And the magnet can say, what colour am I supposed to be? And this panel can ask, should I have accessibility symbols on right now? What I've essentially done here is decouple the meta-level game logic from the moment-to-moment -moment level design, which might seem kind of obvious in retrospect, but I definitely didn't have this during the MVP. There, every level had its own duplicated version of the code for saving and loading progress, transitioning between levels, and there was even a duplicated version of the pause menu in every level in the game. It was wildly inefficient, it made testing levels slow, that added all this extra junk to my hierarchy, it made it difficult to change any of these options, and it was hard to track stuff between levels. This new system is much, much smarter, so I decided to create a bunch more of these invisible managers. Now you can send a level name to the transition manager, and it will wipe away the current level and wipe into the new level. That's paired nicely with the music manager, which takes the non-existent soundtrack and fades it out and in with the level load. There's also the HUD manager, which draws stuff on top of the screen, like these tutorial prompts and these context-sensitive button icons, which, yes, do change if you change your controller. And I made a UI manager to hold the pause menu and the options menu, which, yes, is hideously ugly. Right now, I'm just focused on the functionality. I'll make it pretty in the future. Just like sound design, UI design is a future mark problem. And yes, I realise that future mark problems are starting to stack up a bit. But there was one more manager I wanted to build. So back in the MVP, the game moves from level 1 to level 2 to level 3, and so on. And I'm not sure if such a linear progression of levels is the best for a puzzle game. Sure, some puzzle games do have this, like Portal and Inside, but others, like Braid, Steven Sausage Roll, and Baba Is You, have a more open-ended structure. 
You can skip levels, play puzzles out of order, and come back later to puzzles you skipped in the past. And I kind of like this. I'm not keen on giving the player a big brick wall just because they got stumped on one of the puzzles. So I wanted to build a non-linear level structure into my game, and here's how I did it. In each level, the goal is to find and collect a key, and I have a new progression manager that has a list of all the keys in the game, and it ticks them off when you find one, and it saves that data to the hard drive. I built a really simple hub level with doors that go between the different puzzles, and a special door at the end that is only unlocked after the player has a certain number of keys a number that I can very easily change as I tweak the balance of the game. And speaking of tweaking and balancing, I wanted to make it really easy on myself to change the order of the levels based on players' feedback about the relative difficulty of the puzzles. So the whole system is essentially rooted through the level's file name. The levels are named something like 01 lift 02, with the first two characters denoting which hub the level belongs to, and the last two characters denoting which key is found in that level. And then all of the relevant systems just read the level name and pull out the strings they need to find out where the level belongs. And this means I can change the order of the levels just by renaming the files, which is super efficient. And while we're on this efficiency kick, let's talk about tools. So another thing I found in my MVP was that it was really kind of frustrating to build and especially iterate on level designs. Like, let me give you an example. If I want to take this electromagnet and make it a bit shorter and change it to be red, I need to resize the area effector, resize the visual for the beam, move the particle system and reduce its lifetime, change the particle colors, change the beam's color, change the sprite's color, change the magnet's layer, change the buffer zone's tag, and change the area effector's collider mask. And now imagine doing this for pretty much every mechanic in the game just because you want to move something one tile up or you want to start the level with a door open rather than closed. And what I came to realize is that Unity is a tool for making games, but it's not a tool for making my game, because that's on me. I have to put in place the tools and systems that will allow me to generate content for my specific game. And so with that in mind, the new version of the electromagnetic panel has a simple slider in the inspector for the height. And as I move this slider up and down, it's automatically updating all of those variables I talked about earlier. Same for these buttons to change it from red to blue or on to off. Basically, if there's something in my game that I want to change a lot and the process of doing it is just a rote sequence of steps, I might as well build a simple script that can do it all in a single button press. And so I updated more and more of the stuff from my MVP to be more easy and efficient to use. Like this moving box, I now use Unity's gizmos to show me exactly where the box will move from and to and the path it will take. I also set up a dedicated window just for my prefab game mechanics so I can drag and drop them into the scene like I'm playing Super Magnet Maker. Oh, and another thing that annoyed me in the MVP was Unity events. Not the events themselves, they are amazing. They basically work like this. In, say, the code for this green button, I can say when the button is pressed, just invoke a Unity event. And then back in the editor, in the inspector, I have a really simple field where I can just drag in any object from the scene and have it run basically any function on it. So now when I press the green button, it turns off the electromagnetic panel. Really powerful stuff for a puzzle game, but it's a bit frustrating that I have to find the relevant thing in the hierarchy. It would be super amazing if I just had a Photoshop style pipette to click on the object in the scene. And so I abused my internet fame to get someone much smarter than me to just build that exact thing I described, and it is amazing and I use it all the time. There's a link to the GitHub page for this Unity asset in the description for this video. So now that I've built a bunch of tools that should hopefully make it easier and more efficient to design puzzles, I decided I might as well test it by building a puzzle. And yeah, it was a lot more efficient, but there were still a few annoyances and bottlenecks to the process. So I fixed 
them and tested it again by building another level and then another level and another level before realizing something. I now have a whole fleet of system level managers working in the background. I have this whole hub structure built and I've made four or five brand new puzzles. Did I just accidentally make a video game? <laughs> Whoops. Uh, it's funny, I genuinely wasn't planning on making a new demo for my game, but I've got like 90% of one on my hard drive now. I think it just goes to show how powerful it can be to have efficient tools. They can make building the game so fast and easy that you can build stuff without even realizing it. So I think it's worth putting in a little bit of extra effort and a bit of extra pain at the beginning of the process because it will just save you so much time and effort and heartache for the main part of the game's development. But whatever the case, this is awesome because again, back in the MVP, there was a lot of feedback I needed to address. Stuff that people didn't really like about the game. Like the character feels incredibly crummy to control. There's lots of annoying inconsistencies in the visual language. The mix between platforming and puzzles had some players confused about how to play. Most of the puzzles fell short of that aha eureka moment. Many of the levels were messy and buggy and had you waiting around for cycles to reset. And the game didn't truly feel like it was built around this magnet mechanic. So this new demo, Untitled Magnet Game version 2.0, is a chance for me to fix all of those problems and see what people think of the game now. And so I would love it if you could pop over to itch.io and play this brand new surprise demo drop. Yes, I had to do it. It's available to everyone, not just patrons. It works on PC and Mac. You can play it with keyboard and mouse or with various different controllers. Please give it a go and drop me some feedback, either in the comments on this video or over on itch.io. And then I will come back, discuss the new round of feedback and see where I should take the game next. Thank you so much for watching. Have fun with the game and I'll talk to you soon. Oh, before I go, the uh, GMTK Game Jam is back for 2022. It starts on July 15th, so while you're over on itch.io, just sign up for the Game Jam there as well. I'll see you soon.